let's now go back to Najashi. So Najashi was this just king who gave refuge to the Muslims. By the way, when he gave refuge to Muslims and he signaled his belief in what the Prophet taught to Muslims. Remember we talked about Surah Maryam and how Najashi said this is exactly what Jesus preached and even when Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, the brother of Imam Ali السلام, told him that our belief in Jesus is that he's not the son of God, he's the servant of God. Najashi even confirmed this. Now this disappointed the bishops who were around Najashi. He's like, what's going on? It's Najashi, he's believing in this religion. He doesn't believe Jesus is the son of God. What appears from historical accounts is that a revolution took place in Abyssinia to overthrow Najashi because they accused him of defecting from Christianity and not preserving the original Christian beliefs. Look at what Najashi does. He tells the group of Muslims who were there. He tells them there is an uprising. I don't know if I will make it. So here are boats I have made ready for you. If they overthrow me, quickly leave, escape and go wherever you want. And if I retain my power and stay as a king, you're welcome to stay here, subhanAllah. Even though he realized that their presence sparked this revolution, he was so merciful with them. Now Allah grants him victory and he retains his power as a king. The rebellion or the revolution does not become successful. Now what happened to the fate of Najashi? While some Muslims throughout the upcoming years they did go back, especially when the Prophet migrated um, six, seven years later to Medina, many of them did go, but some of them stayed for 15 years in Habasha, like Ja'far. Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, when did he leave Habasha? He lived in the seventh year of the Hijrah, when the Prophet was in Medina, right after the Battle of Khaybar, he came back. So for 15 years, he was in, in, in Ethiopia and they were spreading the, the teachings of Islam and that's why that's one reason why Islam spread in Africa due to those early Muslim people who were there. Now when Ja'far came back to Medina, we'll examine that later when we talk about the events of Medina, the Prophet was so happy when he embraced Ja'far and he said, I don't know for which am I happier today, for the victory of Khaybar or for the return of Ja'far. So he stayed there for 15 years. Now we have historical accounts that tell us the Prophet, when he went to Medina, he sent a letter to Najashi. He sent him a letter inviting him to the religion of Islam. It's a beautiful letter, we actually have the text of that letter. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. Min Muhammadin Rasulillah. إِلَى النَّجَاشِ الْأَصْحَمْ مَلِكِ الْحَبَشَ From the Messenger of God to Najashi, his first name was Asham, the king of Habasha, Abyssinia. سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكَ The Prophet gives his salam to Najashi. فَإِنِّي أَحْمَدُ إِلَيْكَ اللَّهَ الْمَلِكَ الْقُدُّوسَ الْمُؤْمِنَ الْمُهَيْمِنَ وَأُشْهُدُ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ عِيسَى رُوحَ اللَّهُ وَكَلِمَتَهُ أَلْقَاهَا إِلَى مَرْيَمْ الْبَتُولِ It's a beautiful letter in which the Prophet says, I testify there is only one God. I testify that Jesus is the Word of God that He gave to Maryam, the pure. God created Jesus from His own soul and He blew into Him from His spirit, just as He created Adam. And I invite you, O Najashi, to believe in the one God without a partner, to worship God and obey Him and to follow me and to follow my religion. If you do that, you know, and, then, and then he tells him that I've sent you know, Ja'far, my cousin, he is the leader of the Muslim group, he thanks him for giving them refuge and then he tells him that I've made the proof clear to you, either you follow me, Allah will save you, your world is good, your hereafter will be good, or if you want to be stubborn and reject me, God will punish you. So he sends him a letter like that. 
Najashi is inspired by this letter and our historical accounts tell us that he became a Muslim. He embraced the religion of Islam. He believed in the message of the Prophet. He sends a letter back to the Prophet. He thanks him for the letter. He tells him everything you've written, I believe in. I consider you a messenger. It, it would be my honor to serve you and wash your feet. However, as you know, I have obligations here as a king. If you order me to come and serve you, I will come. If not, then I am sending my own son. He sends his own son. He says, my son will serve you. And he sends his son to the Prophet The Prophet says, no, stay there and you know, be the king and invite, to, invite people to worship God, the one God. So in fact, we have indications that Najashi became a Muslim and he embraced the message of the Prophet we, haven't, we even have historical accounts that later Najashi sent a group of 14 priests or bishop to visit the Prophet in Medina. When they entered Medina, those 14 priests, the Prophet got up, now they were Christian priests, they didn't, he became Muslim secretly but they didn't. He, the Prophet stood up to serve them with his own hands. The companions told him, Ya Rasulullah, this is not appropriate, let us serve them. He said no. Najashi honored the Muslims and he gave them refuge and these are the people of the book. So I want to serve them with, with my own hands. And subhanAllah, this shows you the spirit of interfaith that the Prophet has. Bishops coming to his mosque, he gets up with his own hands, he serves them. And he refuses, he, reje he, he does not allow the companions to serve, the, to serve them. He wants to serve them himself, to show respect. Now Najashi dies when the Prophet ﷺ was in Medina. We do have hadiths that when he died, the Prophet actually prayed for him. He did salat on him, meaning he prayed for him and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive him. So that's the ending, you know, with Najashi. In the seventh year of Hijrah, all those Muslims who remained in Habasha, they returned back to Medina with Ja'far ibn Abi Talib. So it was really an interesting, you know, segment in the history of Islam and those early Muslims planted the roots of Islam in Africa and that's truly amazing. Despite the Arabs being so racist, anti-African, you would imagine why would any of those Africans become Muslim? It was because of acts like these, because of people like Ja'far, who really sacrificed for the sake of Allah, 15 years away from his home just to sacrifice for the religion of Islam and to teach others about the religion of Islam. We had later Imams of Ahlul Bayt marrying women who were African slaves, African slaves, to shatter this racist idea that Arabs had. Nothing is more powerful than your leader in society marrying an African slave because he was sending a powerful message that she's equal to anyone else. That's why Africans, especially Northern Africa, they embraced the religion of Islam because of acts like these.